Hey everyone, this is Gabriel and in today's video, I want to talk about how to bring your studio when you're playing on a gig. Here we go! So I started playing music when I was very young. And back then, things were so simple. I would bring my instrument, quarter inch cable out into the PA, that was the end of it. But as time went by, I actually started to care more about the tone of my instrument, quality, this, the texture of the sounds. Uh, later on, I got very involved in a studio recording. And so whether it was like, just home studios or an actual recording studio, I got to see what the engineers at those studios uh, would do in order to capture the sound and everything that they would use to process that sound in order for them to get an end result that was just simply amazing. Uh, and so that got me to think, is it possible to bring some of the soundscapes from the studio world into the gigging world? So if you have had the chance uh, to go to a, into a studio, one of the first things that you realize is just the sheer amount of amazing gear that the engineers have at their disposal in order for them to process and capture uh, the sounds. And so if uh, you want to use that on a live gig, of course it becomes nearly impossible or impractical to do so. So the imaginary backpack that I'm going to be using today to bring all that amazing gear with me when I go out and play on a live gig uh, is going to be the Line 6 Helix. If you're not familiar with the Line 6 Helix, it's essentially a multi-effect processor uh, for guitars and, you know, really nearly any other instrument. Um, so that's what I'm going to be using today. So before I jump into my computer, I want to lay down a little bit of a foundation of what a, a potential signal path uh, in a studio may look like when uh, you're capturing that sound. Now, this is not like this is exactly what happens. Many engineers may decide to do things differently. There's really not like a right way to do it. But in my experience, uh, typically this is kind of like the steps that uh, they take in order for them to capture a signal and process it. Uh, so the first thing would be the instrument, right? So it can be a voice, but in this case, in today's video, I'm doing the acoustic guitar. And so you may bring your acoustic guitar with you to the studio, uh, or the studios may have a selection of guitars that you can pick from. You know, I mentioned earlier on a typical gig, some of those acoustic guitars have pickups. You plug in straight with a, a quarter inch cable. However, in the studio, what engineers decide to do most of the time is actually put a microphone in front of the guitar to capture the sound, which is so much better. Uh, and there are all kinds of different uh, types of microphones, condenser microphones, dynamic microphones, ribbon. The tone that you get when you capture the sound of a guitar through a microphone is just so much better. The next thing on the signal path is plugging that microphone into a preamp. So that brings the microphone signal up to a level that is actually be able to be processed for the rest of the uh, gear uh, in the studio. And so there are a lot of very famous companies out there like Neve or SSL or API. Even now in the home studios, uh, there's a lot of amazing interfaces now that actually have really, really awesome preamps. In the case of the Apollo, not only does it have an amazing and clean preamp, but it also emulates this like a Neve or an SSL preamps that you can kind of put in there to emulate those sounds. The next step uh, in the signal path would be running that through a compressor. And so there are a lot of legendary compressors that an uh, engineer may decide to use, just to name a couple, uh, maybe like the LA-2A or the SSL bus compressor um, that are, you know, kind of like industry standard when they're processing, you know, a sound in the studio. So the next thing that may happen in this signal path is maybe sending that track to an auxiliary or a bus track. Uh, it can be for a number of different things. In the case of a bus, uh, an engineer may decide to group alike instruments all into one track for different processing or an auxiliary uh, track for maybe effect processing like a delay or reverb. So one of the last things that may happen is that everything is get sent to a master track or a master bus where there's 
additional processing that takes place there. But one of the things that I want to highlight at this stage is, is tape printing or tape emulation. So whether they actually send it to an actual tape recording machine to be printed there or in the computer, a tape emulation plugin to, to get that tape analog processing. That's part of the tone and part of the magic is that tape emulation. And so that may be one of the last things that happens to the signal before it gets, you know, put on, you know, iTunes or YouTube or wherever you're listening to all of these records. All right, guys, so I'm here at my computer and I want to go through every of the steps that I mentioned earlier in the signal path. Uh, I'm actually going to bundle number one and number two, the instrument and the mic. So of course I have my acoustic guitar and that's the instrument that I'm actually using. If you can see there in the screen recording, um, I have a loop. So I just did a little loop. So you'll hear, hear it in a second, but I'm, I'm actually using an IR block. And so with uh, this AR that I'm using, I'm actually tackling the instrument as well as the second item, which is the mic. And so I'm actually want to give a big shout out to Brian Wall at Worship Tutorials because I'm actually using one of the IRs, one of his acoustic guitars. I think it's a McPherson. I can't remember exactly uh, the the model, but I'm going to uh, leave a, a link in the description to his website so that you can check it out. I'm actually using the Holy Grail. So that's actually going to be kind of like pretending that I'm actually borrowing one of those guitars in the studio. So I'm going to turn my Larrabee into a McPherson using his IR, uh, but also uh, he's got a different selection of microphones that he uses there. And so uh, I'm actually using the Shopes M222. So that's how I'm tackling the first two items, the instrument and the mic. And so I'm going to go ahead and put that little loop. Uh, and so I'm going to unengage everything in this patch that I have here in the Helix. And so you're going to see just the acoustic guitar straight directly from the Helix, the Helix to Logic. How, this is how I'm recording. So I'm going to go ahead and play that for you guys. So now I'm going to turn the impulse response. Wow, what a difference, right? So this is kind of like the main hero uh, of this overall tone is that IR impulse response from uh, Worship Tutorials. So go to the website, check it out. Uh, so that will be the first step. Now, the next step uh, in the signal path uh, will be the preamp, right? So uh, what I'm doing here, I'm using a Helix block to uh, kind of like emulate a preamp and I'm using the Studio Tube Pre. That's actually a Line 6 Helix original. So I'm going to start playing again. You're going to see uh, uh, without just the IR uh, and then I'm going to turn the Pre. So here it is. That's just the IR. I want to turn the preamp. So bring the level up just a little bit. You can bring the gain down a little bit and then compensate with the level. Preamps tend to sometimes color the tone, and sometimes that's why you want to run this, the, the sound through a preamp. The more gain that you put into the preamp log, the more character you're going to get. But if you want a cleaner character, you bring the gain down and compensate with the level. Now, and I'm playing very softly the guitar, so if I was digging deeper into the guitar, you may be able to get that a little bit of harmonic distortion and character from the preamp.
All right, next on the signal path would be a compressor. And so what I'm using here in this patch uh, is the LA Studio Comp, which is essentially an emulation of the very, very famous compressor, LA2A. I just want to even things out uh, and maybe kind of like also bring the gain staging of the levels just slightly higher, but very like smooth. So I'm going to start playing the looper again. So you're here in the impulse response in the studio pre, and I'm going to engage the compressor. Without it. And come on. The last thing that I want to say here is that I actually, from this point on, I'm actually using stereo uh, blocks in the Helix. All right, so the next thing that I want to uh, kind of tackle, you know, I mentioned how the signal sometimes goes to an auxiliary uh, channel or a bus. So I'm actually thinking or, or, or grabbing that idea. I'm actually going to pretend that I'm sending this to an auxiliary uh, uh, track for uh, an effect, in this case, reverb. And so I'm using the reverb block. What I'm, the one that I'm using is the dynamic room because I, I really like to put this instrument in context. I want it to feel like you're actually in a room somewhere. The performer is actually in a room. And so I'm going to start playing that loop again, and then I'm going to engage that dynamic room. Reverb. Okay, so the last thing that I want to demonstrate here in this patch is kind of like that master boss, like, again, in the signal path, the last thing that happens is that everything is get sent to that, you know, mastering track. And there's all kinds of different processing that engineers might decide to do there. But one of the things that they do is tape emulation. So the Helix has a block that is called uh, the retro reel. And so that's going to be kind of like the final piece of this studio uh, in your Helix. And so I'm going to engage again that looper. And you're going to hear that uh, progression. And then I'm going to turn on that retro reel. Okay, so IR, pre, compression, and reverb. And I'm going to turn on that tape emulation. Very, very subtle.
So thanks everyone for sticking with me all the way to the end. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and you found it useful. I'm super excited about this and other content that I'm putting together for you guys, so more to come. Let me know in the comments uh, if you have any questions about uh, this patch that uh, I reviewed with you guys today. Let me know if you're interested in, in getting the patch. Uh, I will have to figure that out. The IR from Worship Tutorials would not be included. Of course, you have to just go to their website. They have a, a, a bunch of goodies that you can get for free. Also, a lot of stuff that they have available for purchase. So go to the website and check them out. Uh, thanks again for watching and see you next time. Adiós.